Welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator Broadcast with Daniel White III. My name is Danita Evangeline White and I am the second oldest daughter of Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us today as Daniel White III encourages us to keep the soul winner's fire by spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Soul Winning Motivator a podcast number 97. This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. As always, it is so good to be with you today, to challenge you, to encourage you, to exhort you, and if you will, motivate you to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ right where you are to those who are not believers in Christ. A great soul winning pastor by the name of Tommy Steele said many years ago, you can get one if you want one. Pastor Glendy Hamilton, I believe, said it as well. You can get one if you want one. Somebody is ready to be saved. Go and witness to those who are not saved right where you are. God is holding you responsible. When I first got saved, we learned from Ezekiel how that if we don't witness for the Lord, the blood of that soul will be required at our hands. Even though, beloved, we will share some instructions on how to witness for the Lord from time to time, we believe that most Christians do not need to learn how to witness for the Lord. They simply just need to go and do it somehow, some way. If no other way but to pass out a gospel tract to the girl at McDonald's. So our aim is more motivational than instructional. Our soul winning passage from the Word of God today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, which reads, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Allow me, if you would, to share with you some important insights regarding this passage of Scripture from Brother David Guzik's commentary on the Bible. He goes on to say, Paul describes how the gospel can be of benefit to man, the gospel is only of benefit if it is received and if one will stand in it. The word gospel means good news. As the word was used in ancient times, it didn't have to describe the message of salvation in Jesus Christ necessarily. It could be used of any good news, but the best news ever is that we can be saved from the punishment we deserve from God because of what Jesus did for us. The Corinthian Christians first received the gospel. The message of the gospel must first be believed and received and embraced. The Corinthian Christians also did stand in the gospel Despite all their problems with carnality, walking in the flesh, lack of understanding, strife, divisions, immorality, and even weird spirituality, they still stood for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is in contrast to the Galatian church who was quickly being moved away to another gospel. The Corinthian Christians had done well. They received the uh, gospel. They were doing well. They did stand in the gospel, but they had to continue to do well and hold fast to the gospel Paul preached to them. 
Every Christian must take seriously their responsibility to not only have a good past and a good present, but to determine to have a great future with the Lord also. Hold fast also implies there were some people or some things which might want to snatch the true gospel away from the Corinthian Christians. All the more, this is why they had to hold on. If the Corinthian Christians did not continue to hold fast, one day they might let go of the gospel. And if one lets go of the gospel, all their previous belief won't do them any good. It was as if they had believed in vain. And of course, I know this passage is not teaching that you can lose your salvation. Beloved, our soul winning quote today is from Leighton Ford, a wonderful evangelist of years gone by. He said, I find that almost everyone I have ever talked with has been willing and often eager to talk about spiritual things if he can do it in a relaxed, non-threatening situation. Our Soul Winning Devotional is part 80 of our series titled, What Evangelism Is, from Dr. David Early and Dr. David Willer. And I want to remind you, beloved, to take advantage of our special offer. If you enjoy this podcast, please feel free to purchase a copy of this book, Evangelism Is, How to Share Jesus with Passion and Confidence. It is available on our website for just $35. Evangelism is Sharing Jesus Without Fear, Part 3. The Book of Acts is the story of Christ followers boldly sharing their faith in the midst of intense persecution. For example, after being arrested, beaten, and warned not to say anything else about Jesus, Peter and John asked the church to join them in prayer. Did they pray that the persecution would lessen? No. Instead, they prayed for more boldness to share Jesus. Acts 4.29 says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. In the next chapter, Luke tells us that the apostles were again facing persecution for sharing the gospel. These men were unafraid to obey the command to share Jesus regardless of the circumstances. Again, they were imprisoned, but this time the Lord sent an angel to open the doors and let them go free. The angel's message to them was to continue telling people about Jesus, regardless of persecution. So the next day, that is exactly what they did. Acts chapter 5, verses 19 through 21 says, But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people. All of the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. When they got up the next morning, they went to the temple courts, looking for opportunities to share Christ. As always, the courts were crowded, the grand central station of the New Testament. These Men were not hiding from the people who imprisoned them the day before. Instead, they remained faithful to their call as evangelists. Like the apostles, we may also face persecution. Also, like the apostles, nothing should keep us from sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with the people around us. Later, the apostles were again taken and questioned by the Sanhedrin. God used an unlikely ally within the Sanhedrin to keep them from death. Instead of cowering in fear, 
the apostles rejoiced to be considered worthy to suffer for the cause of Christ. To them, persecution and spiritual warfare were proof that the message of Christ was being communicated. Despite their difficulties and unplanned persecutions, they never ceased telling of Jesus' love. Acts 5.42 says, And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. I want to repeat that. And daily, the Bible says, in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Can we say we have the same boldness and passion to reach the lost and guide them to Christ? Do you have a pre-Christian William Fay in your life that needs to hear the gospel today? Somebody like William Fay who was uh, anti-God and uh, didn't want to hear the gospel but God allowed him to go through some troubles and he finally listened and he got saved and became a great soul winner for the Lord. How about you, dear friend? If so, do not be shy. Be faithful to trust God. In doing so, you can share Jesus without fear. In our next podcast, we will look at why evangelism is sharing your recovery testimony. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we thank you so much for what our hearts have felt and our ears have heard and our minds have contemplated here today. Forgive us of our sins of not doing it. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins of not being like the saints of old, bold, preaching the gospel every day at the church, in the temple, and from house to house. Grant us your grace, your courage, your boldness, your mind, your energy, the power of your Holy Spirit to do just that. If there ever was a time that that needed to happen, it needs to happen now. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help us to do it. Open up great doors for us. And even if we are persecuted, even if we are beheaded for doing so, Lord, help us to stand firm. And to do it for your glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Lord, give us the power of your Holy Spirit to do it. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, in the free pardon of your sins, as the old folks used to say, may I lovingly encourage you to get to know him today. If you don't know how, let me tell you how. First, Accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Yes, there is a hell, my dear friend. Jesus Christ said in Matthew ten twenty eight, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also, the Bible states in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now this is bad news. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ has said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, if you are in this world, God loves you, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. 
Pray and ask him to come into your heart today to save your soul, and he will. Romans 10, 9 through 13 says, That if thou, that if you, shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's guaranteed, my friend. You can bank on that. If God can save me, the chief of sinners, God can save you. Until next time, my beloved, keep the soul winners fire. God bless you.